tools, whether of stone, bronze, iron, or steel, tell the story of man. It's something very unusual. Uh, it's a material that everyone takes for granted. It's something that's around you every day. It's, so we like to show actually how it goes together, how it's made. Our goal is to educate people a little bit about glass, hopefully get people interested in glass. Uh, we think it's one of the most entertaining art forms to watch. So. Gaffer is a glass blower, so it was generally known as the most accomplished person in a factory, usually the oldest person in a factory. Nowadays, uh, people will use it to refer to the person who's making the piece. So if it's your piece, you're gaffing the piece. Not only are you in an environment where things are 2,000 degrees, which probably doesn't happen very often, but then on top of that, you have to think about keeping the entire piece above a certain temperature or else it's going to crack and break, but you can't get it too hot because you'll lose your shape. Um, you're always turning, counteracting gravity, and all of these things are happening simultaneously, and you're telling your assistant what to do because you're not, you can't make it by yourself, so you always have to work with someone. If we let the glass do what it wants to do and let it become what it wants to be, it wants to be a little puddle on the floor. Basically, anything that we're making up there, we're forcing it into that shape. And so you have to have a very set picture in your mind of what you're making because you have to know, you have to basically be able to deconstruct that shape or that object or that sculpture and work it into different pieces. We have a plethora of, of tools. We have crimps, we have stamps, we have all kinds of good stuff. If you talk to any glass worker, they'll say that the most useful tool that you have are the jacks. And they basically look like a giant pair of tweezers. They're about anywhere from about 15 inches long to almost almost two feet long for making something very large. Newspaper's fantastic too, that's one of my favorites. You can take an entire edition, fold it up, soak it in water. If you can imagine the glass is 2,000 degrees, you're never gonna touch it. It's, it's the closest you ever get to actually being able to feel what you're doing and not working on it via an instrument. We use what's called cullet, which is actually pre-melted glass, so it basically looks like you can imagine little tiny ice cubes that are about an inch square. Then all we have to do is shovel it back into our furnace and melt it into what you see us playing with. Uh, what we call frit is those little chunks, it's crushed up colored glass, it looks kind of like sprinkles, and that's one of the quickest ways for us to apply the color. All we have to do is roll through it. So the heat from our glass sticks all the little chunks to the outside, and then we melt it out, each one of the little chunks melts out into a little dot, and then we end up with a coating of, of color or spotted color. The thing that we're most likely to burn is our hair. <laughs> you can imagine a 900 degree oven will give you a haircut really quickly, but as far as actually getting burned, very, very rarely. Less than I would burn myself in my kitchen.